So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can quickly and easily set up your own self-hosted agent, um, Windows agent to be specific, to be able to run Terraform or your own CI CD pipeline jobs, managing your own software and things like that that you would want to add onto your own software or own um, hosted servers. Now there's plenty of reasons why you would want your own self-hosted server. Um, I'll drop a link down below on some Microsoft docs on um, reasons you would want to go self hosted versus Microsoft hosted. But if you're looking at this, you're probably already going to want to go with this uh, particular setup. So if you want, go with your ad pools here. And another good thing with self hosted is you can kind of maintain a maintenance schedule and any type of, uh, um, you know, software that you want to install on it. Because when you go uh, Microsoft hosted, the images or instances are deleted after each run. So if you're in Azure DevOps, you want to make sure you go to your settings, go to agent pools, add pool, and then go to self host and we'll give it a name. So the name can be whatever you want. I'm just going to call it Kevin test or actually just call it Kevin pool and grant access to all pipelines. And now that we got the pool set up. We can click on new agent here. And you want to go ahead and download this here. So while that's downloading, we're going to also go to portal.azure.com. And inside of here, you want to go ahead and create a resource. And you want to go ahead and select create a virtual machine. Now you can create Windows or you know whatever other virtual machines you, or um, Linux or whatever. But as far as this goes, the uh, agent kind of helps still make uh, things a little easier um, during the setup process. So once we set up the Windows one here, we're going to put in your subscription that you want. Kevin Pool VM. For the image, you want to do, choose 2019 Data Center. Then let's select the architecture type. So that's x x64, which is what's basically available there. Choose something, you don't need anything too crazy with like a lot of like RAM CPU. Um, you can look at even some of like the general purpose ones that are kind of cost effective. For the video, I'm gonna just do something that has a decent amount of RAM to kind of get through things while we're doing the video here. And this is what you're gonna use to log into the server here. And once you set your password, you want to make sure you uh, do allow the RDP port. Um, if this isn't connected to like a um, corporate network or a virtual network that's, uh, you know, set up for your company, you're probably going to need to also allow that so that you can access it from home on the public IP address. Uh, this is just a licensing thing where you can kind of, you know, basically get your instance, you know, for, uh, at a cheaper discount if you already have the Azure hybrid benefit, which I don't, but you can throw it on there and it's just now a cheaper image. Um, click, select next through all this. For the virtual network, I already have one, but I'm, I'm going to select, uh, you can keep these new if you don't. For the security group, don't worry about this. It'll just create one and then make sure to put that RDP port um, accessible to the outside. If you don't want it to be fully accessible to, from anywhere, you can create a new network security group and then select your home IP address or work IP address or whatever. And then I usually delete public IP and make when the VM is deleted. That way I can clean up some resources that I'm not using, especially when I'm only doing this for like testing purposes. So after that, really everything else you can kind of just skip through and just review and create this here. So now that that's being created, that's going to take a little bit of time uh, to come up. So we'll give this a little pause here and come back. Now that the uh, resource is finished, we can uh, select go to the resource. And we should have a public IP address um, on that instance there. So using your remote desktop tool of choice, um, I'm on a Mac, so I'm just using the Microsoft Remote Desktop um, app. I'm going to paste in that IP address and then 
enter in the username and password that you created in the portal. So once that uh, opens up, let me go back to our file explorer and let's grab this agent zip file. I'm going to copy this. Now the first initial sign in might take a little bit of time to get everything up. So we're going to go ahead and paste that in there. Depending on your internet speeds, this portion could take a little bit of time. But while that's running, there's going to be some prerequisites we'll need as well. So you want to go in and I would recommend creating a folder on your C drive called Agents. And this is where you'll extract the uh, files for. And this is also where your um, when your pipelines and things like that run, this is where everything will kind of be stored as far as like your artifacts and uh, your tools that kind of get uh, installed from your releases and things like that. So from my other videos, you might have seen where Terraform gets installed in here. The uh, files get dropped in here for the releases. And so it's good to kind of make sure you keep, uh, you know, I just kind of make it agents and then we'll run a file once this gets upload it will extract everything there and then we'll also need a personal access token to uh, set this up to be able to talk to um, our Azure DevOps pipelines this particular server so the other good thing about being it being that it's self-hosted is you now have a internal or an external public IP address that you can map this directly to so when you're doing anything particular as far as uh, um, security wise, you can, you know, set it to where like, you know, only this VM can access your uh, storage account where your state files may sit and, and your or your key vaults. And, you know, if you're integrating this in with like Azure Key Vault, um, things like that. So now it's a, a lot more secure because you can kind of maintain uh, who can access and get to what. So while this is running, let's see how far we got here. So let's give this a second and come back. So now that we got the, the um, files um, uploaded and then extracted to the agents folder, we want to also open up a PowerShell window as an administrator. And then we want to navigate to that agent folder and we want to run this config.cmd um, file. This takes a little minute on the first run. So cd, then I'm just going to run through a basic couple of list of questions. So the server URL is going to be your actual https dev.azure.com and then your organizational name which is mine is going to be ecwbys276 and then it's going to say what's your authentication type we're going to use a personal access token and then we, we need to go ahead and create that token so you just go up here where it says user settings personal access tokens and then I'm going to create a new token. I'm going to just call this Kevin Pool Test. And then you can delete it when ap afterwards. You only need it to really run, uh, create this specific connection. Let's copy that. Paste that in there. Now we're going to enter the agent pool. So it's default but we want to I'm going to put it into my Kevin pool test oh, she said it's not found Let me refresh this so enter the agent pool so let's see 
Maybe I might have spelled it wrong. Let's go to a different. Oh, I'm actually looking at my access tokens. Let me see what I actually name my pool. Oh, Kevin Pool. Okay. And then the agent name. So you can enter the agent name. I'm just going to call it Kevin Pool VM. You can name it whatever you want. Now, these tool capabilities, these are, you know, you can see these under go back. I don't see agent shows up in here. I'll kind of show you, but. Now the work folder, so the work folder is where your um, um, pipelines and releases kind of work in. So that's where you'll see like your artifacts and things like that get dropped to. So I'm just going to call it uh, underscore work, but that'll get created by itself as well. And then our enter run as uh, enter run agent as a service. We want to run it as a service. Um, enter enable unrestricted for agent services. We can say yes. The user account, we don't have one, so we're just going to use the network service account. Actually, you don't have to just press enter on that. So this is going to grant the permissions, and then this says you want to prevent this service from starting immediately. We don't want it to, uh, we want it to start, so just press enter here. So now that that's started, we should see our agent come popping in here. Now it says that it's offline, but it should show up here. And then the capabilities you'll see here as far as like, uh, kind of like environment variables type deal. Um, you know, you can add some new capabilities if you want um, as you get into those. But then if we go back to our agents, we should see it come back online. So, okay, there we go. So we see it online. Um, you can have multiple agents. You can create as many agents as you want. Um, that can just depend on like, you know, the type of uh, releases and pipelines you're running. If you have multiple jobs that could run or other people that need to utilize, uh, you know, resources at the same time, you might have multiple agents within the same pool so that those jobs can um, not have to stay queued up for long periods of time. And then you can, you know, enable it or disable it if you don't want it to be utilized for maintenance reasons or things like that, or you're doing some work on it. But again, that's as simple as just a making like a Windows self-hosted uh, VM or uh, basically a VM that you can utilize for your pipelines and repos. So then when you go into your pipelines, you can actually go in and if I edit this under the pipeline, you should see the agent pool um, show up here and then it'll know which uh, you know agent to use outside of those and then the same thing goes for your releases you know I'll edit this release and then I can go in and see the agent pool and change this over to my Kevin pool and then it will run off that uh, within the Windows instance so again, if you have any questions in regards to the setup or how yours is set up or, um, you know, enhancing it to, you know, make it fit with what you need, give me a comment or, uh, you know, leave me a comment down below and I'll be sure to kind of help where I can or, you know, kind of lead you in the right direction. Again, this isn't a full informative, but an easy way to set up, uh, you know, an uh, easy to use Windows VM. And then if you want to save a little money, if you're just doing this for testing purposes, you can come in and actually stop this and that way you don't get any like charges with the VM just constantly running all the time. So again, thanks for tuning in and hope to see you next time.